What is going on, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another edition of On the Road to Victory. I'm your host, Jimmy Smith, and thank you for taking the time. Hope you're having yourselves a great Labor Day. It is a uh, pouring rain here, so yeah, uh, really puts a damper on things. But uh, I hope you guys are doing well. Found a little time here to talk about some Eagles news. Of course, Eagles always have to give us something on days where I feel like, uh, hey, I can enjoy the day. But I always love talking about the birds, so happy to give you guys the news, talk about it, and uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. So thanks for taking the time. Any questions, any comments you have, you know you can leave them down below, whether you're watching this live or you are watching this later. But let's jump right into this. We had uh, a couple things. First, I was going to talk about Jason Peters, but Anthony Harris was just let go from the Eagles practice squad. So going to talk about both of those things. But again, would love to hear your thoughts. But I figured last night I had to do it so late. Labor Day weekend. Hope your guys' weekend was great. Um, you know, it, it was just too much for me, but it had to be pretty late last night. I know a lot of you guys missed it, but what I'm going to do is talk about some of these moves, why they had to make these moves, and, you know, we'll look at the NFC East rosters here quick. So just show you the all-season moves they made, the losses, additions, the draft picks, and then look at their depth charts. So we're going to run through this. Any comments that you have, Please let me hear it. Jock Talk, my man. Hope you are doing well. Appreciate you taking the time, dude. Uh, we're going to jump right in, though. Uh, first, let's talk about it. Anthony Harris, he was let go from the practice squad. Uh, they said some weird stuff like, oh, yeah, wanted a, it was mutual. They wanted to release him so he could find whatever. It's like, dude, anybody could sign him off the practice squad. So not really sure what they're saying there, but uh, best of luck to you. We traded for CJ Gardner-Johnson, so... No real need to bring him back. Uh, Mac McCain, though, was added to the practice squad. So, uh, yeah, we get one of those versatile defensive backs back onto the practice squad. Now you see the full list of the practice squad here. Still seven players on defense, 10 on offense. And, you know, we have the extra guy, Matt Leo, because of the player exemption international program there. So, uh, look. Uh, this is a move that doesn't really matter that much. We talked about maybe Anthony Harris would come back, you know, after – uh, the first week, you know, some of the money changes, but after the second week, it's only 25% of the money guaranteed. So maybe you kept them on the practice squad, blah, blah, blah. Didn't happen. Uh, so best of luck, dude. Hope you go get a chance to start somewhere. I'm sure he can, but really excited about the future, uh, where this Eagles team is headed here. So uh, getting younger and uh, getting more versatile. Love to see it. So the next piece of news we we're going to talk about, uh, this was literally going to be the only thing I wanted to mention, but here we are. So Jason Peters joining the Cowboys, the son of a, and some people had some questions, you know, why is he joining the practice squad, not the active roster? Well, we just talked about the money. So that's one of those things where you can get him up to speed, hope that he's healthy. And uh, look, I always, you know, say this, I never want to see anybody hurt, um, but we know he has an injury history. So we'll see if he can stay healthy for the Dallas Cowboys, but a couple weeks on the practice squad, maybe get brought up and uh, give them some, time but we'll take a look at their roster here and everything else so we're just going to jump right from jason peters why they added him we'll take a look at this roster and last night you can go check that video out i gave grades uh for the off season uh for all the moves in the nfc east and uh look uh the cowboys they had some holes here and we'll see what they did to try to fill them but the holes were created with uh, you know the offensive lineman leaving uh you had wide receiver obviously and amari cooper leaving blake jarwin still free agent but cedric wilson as well another receiver gregory and zerloin so you lost some pieces um they added some guys you know with undrafted pieces uh usfl kid uh but they got peters now james washington he is going to be out the first uh four weeks so we'll see how he can do for them but didn't really do too much to add to the pieces they missed out but they had a big draft a lot of picks there so you see their draft they did pretty well um not the greatest but they added a lot of pieces that they did need so thought they had a decent draft and uh, a lot of their players you know are depth pieces jalen tolbert going to be you know expected a lot from him with michael gallup out so uh you see the guys in white are new players uh, whether they're a free agent or a rookie whatever you see the ir there the players the tyron smith you know, he obviously being out is why Jason Peters was brought on to the practice squad. So he's obviously not on the depth chart because he's not on the 53 yet. But he will try to work his way up. I think uh, Josh Ball last year was like a fourth, fifth rounder. Uh, but regardless, they had another late rounder, Matt Willetsko, this year. Tyler Smith, their first rounder. So we'll see 
who can actually, you know, get some playing time there, but they've got some issues there. They did draft a replacement there. So, you know, that Tyler Smith, you know, um, he more of a guard there. So I, I don't know, we're not going to be ready to take over for Tyron Smith yet. So a surprising pick for them. We talked about that at the time, but, uh, Hey, regardless, it is what it is. They kept their defense intact, but uh, they added some depth pieces there. Sam Williams in the draft we talked about, uh, but Anthony Barr, Dante Fowler, they got some undrafted kids there. So they, uh, still a force to be reckoned with, uh, but you see why they added Jason Peters to that roster. So look, the Cowboys, they have to protect Dak and they don't have Amari anymore, but they still have CD lamb and Gallup will be back. So it's not like they're still not going to be a good team in their defense. It was much improved last year. And I think they'll continue to improve under Dan Quinn. And I think, you know, it, look, I hate the Cowboys. Let's be real here. But, uh, I still think that they will, you know, challenge us for the NFC East. Still think we walk away with it. The Eagles that is, uh, but we'll see what it is. We'll see what happens here. But making moves like this tells you, ah, you're in a rough place signing 40 year old Jason Peters. And I loved Jason Peters, the 11 years he spent here, hall of famer. I love the dude, but who, um, and maybe they try him at guard too, like we did. Uh, you never know what they're going to try to do with them. So we'll see how they move that line around, but what is going on? My man drew in the building. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying your labor day, uh, weekend and Monday here. Look, I'm enjoying it. Uh, going to spend some more time with the family. So going to try to make this as quick as I can, but you see the Cowboys there. Now let's keep it moving. Uh, let's talk about Washington for a second. Uh, we know Carson Wentz back in the NFC East. And, you know, for Indianapolis to give up on him like that, you know, they lost to the Jags in that game, the final game of the season to not make the playoffs. That was wild. But you saw his unwillingness, you know, to be a leader, a team player. And I just think they weren't having any of that. So Washington taking a chance. They seem like the kind of organization that would. But we're going to see how this kid turns things around. It's going to be very interesting. But uh, they lost some pieces in, you know, the return game. DeAndre Carter, he is one of the best to do it. Uh, so big loss going to the Chargers there. They lost a couple linemen, but they did add some. So, uh, look, getting rid of some older players, but Ioannidis, Tim Settle, some, you know, pretty good depth pieces for them, but they made some big additions. We talk about starting left guard and right guard. They added Carson we just talked about. And then on the defensive side of the ball, they just got Tariq Castro Fields off San Francisco who uh, had waived him. So the rookie goes there. They get some depth pieces there. Uh, and they had a pretty decent draft. You know, some people question it, but Jahan Dotson's a great receiver. Fedarian Mathis, he's a beast. Brian Robinson, unfortunate what happened to him. We hope the best for him. Hope he gets well. Uh, but he's going to be a beast to be reckoned with. He and Gibson, I was definitely not looking forward to that combo with McKissick there. Uh, so you, they had a pretty good draft. Sam Howell, Butler. I mean, all of these guys are on the team, and they're going to have an impact at some point. Uh, you see uh, in yellow here are the new players, but Wentz being added, but Sam Howe, could he be the future? He is a fun kid to watch. We'll see what happens with him. Uh, but that run game we talk about with, you know, Robinson on the NFI list now, that's very unfortunate, but that was going to be a great addition for them. You see the two starting linemen and then, of course, Dotson. So you've got some starters there, and if Logan Thomas is healthy, this could definitely be a pretty damn good offense. McLaurin, Gibson, Samuel, you know, and – Carson Wentz, obviously, he has to at least play to somewhat of what he's got talent and stop being crazy. We'll see what he can do, but this is a pretty talented offense. They've got some young uh, tight ends with some interest. Armani Rogers is pretty intriguing. We talked about him pre-draft, so they've got some fun players to watch, um, and it's just going to be fun. NFC East is always fun to watch, and then on the defensive side of the ball, you know, they had their struggles last year, some injuries, but uh, adding Jamin Davis, I thought was huge. Benjamin St. Juice is going to be a full-time starter. I, I thought they had a good draft last year, so they've got some nice pieces. This year, you see a lot of depth pieces, but uh, Chase Young being on the pup list is huge for them. So um, that's a big break for us when we play them. But regardless, this is still a pretty good defense. And the special teams, though, we talk about losing, you know, DeAndre Carter. They've got Milne, and they were going to use Gibson, but now Gibson, you know, going to be relied upon as the number one back with Brian Robinson out. There was talk that he wouldn't be. So, wild times. We'll see what they decide to do there in Washington. But Washington had themselves a decent offseason. Again, you can go check out that video from last night and take a gander at how I graded these guys. But uh, 
I think, you know, if he is going back to form, you know, that there's a lot of weapons there, man. He never really got those kind of weapons uh, after we won that Super Bowl and had that team. Things kind of fell off. So it's going to be intriguing to see how things work. But he did have a pretty damn good team in Indianapolis. So we'll see how that works out. It will be sickening to see JP and ugly uh, eyes, dude. Mm -mm. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Why? Like you could get so much younger people. If they just had to go get JP. Son of a. Mm. So it is what it is. Um, Went to still threat. Yeah, man. And exactly what I was just saying. You know, I, I think that he's got the talent. We know that. Uh, but I think, you know, he's in his own head half the time anymore. And look, if he can get things going, Ron Rivera is a great coach. So. Yeah, uh, they could definitely be a threat. They've got a great defense and a lot of weapons there. So when they get Robinson back, they'll have a pretty good run game, too. So we'll see how that works out for them. Now in New York, also, you know, a, a decent offseason themselves. Um, you know, so having a pretty damn good draft, a lot of picks uh, they walked into this with. Um, they lost some pieces. Uh, I don't think, you know, Evan Ingram, it was time for them to move on. Hernandez as well. And then on the defensive side of the ball, you know, nothing – Peppers was getting replaced by McKinney, so nothing too crazy. But the additions they made, you know, they got Anderson from us. That pissed me off. But they added Glowinski, you know, starting at guard. They got Hudson as a piece. You know, James can help in the return game. Tyrod backing up Daniel Jones. So they added a lot of pieces here, a couple running backs there, and Breida and Williams. And then on the defensive side of the ball, it looks like they're changing themselves, you know, multiple scheme defense. Uh, odd base, it looks like, with the nose tackle, Justin Ellis from Baltimore. He brought in Lane, McLeod, Pinnock, and uh, Nick Williams, uh, and Ward. So a lot of defensive pieces. And I think that, you know, the Giants are trying to overhaul here. You know, this draft they had, they added a lot of pieces that made this roster. And they had a pretty good draft. We talked about it after their draft. And I thought some of these guys are going to be starters. And uh, you're going to see their depth chart here in a second. But Beavers, even their last pick, he was really standing out in camp and you know, he unfortunately ended up on the IR, I believe it is, to start the season. But they had themselves a pretty good draft. So let's take a look at their depth chart here. You've got, you know, a whole new starting line other than your first round pick last year. So that's a, that's a great direction because they blew. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you had to uh, make some changes there. But they've got some injuries there they're dealing with in Lemieux and Gates and Pert. So that's unfortunate for them there. But trying to bolster this line for Daniel Jones, and it's still Jan Daniel Jones. I know, you know, the kid does have talent. Um, we'll see if he can pull it together, stop with the mistakes. Um, but Saquon Barkley, Kenny, Kenny Galladay has just not been looking like who he was in Detroit. But you've got Tony Shepard added Wandale Robinson, you still got Slayton, I've got Sills there. Uh, and again, Richie James can help you in the return game, but they have a lot of receivers there. Colin Johnson, unfortunately, on IR, but. The, look, if Saquon stays healthy, that's a lot of weapons here, too. So, again, relies on the quarterback. And everybody wants to talk about the Eagles. Like, oh, their quarterback better play well. It's like, well, yeah, everybody's quarterback better play well. But, you know, there's a lot of question marks other than Dak Prescott. But his we will get to them in a sec. Uh, you know, we'll get to the Eagles in a second. But, you know, when you look at teams like yeah, the Cowboys, they're the only one that don't have a question mark at, you know, a quarterback, Dak Prescott. But it's like. Everything around them, you know, your offensive line, you're signing Jason Peters. That's pretty wild. So, uh, look, man, I think the Eagles, it's time to pounce, take that NFC East. And I think we could be the winner of the NFC. I think we could definitely make the Super Bowl, definitely try to pull it off. This team gels, we stay healthy. You know, a lot of things happen during a season, you know, especially now there's 18 weeks, 17 games. So you make it to the playoffs, you're adding multiple weeks. We'll see if we can make it to the promised land. But, uh, the Giants are going to try to contend. Uh, they, look, the NFC East is always a battleground. You love every second of it. But this defense, you know, adding Ellis and Thibodeau, look, that with the Sam linebacker there, all the crazy things they're doing, um, I think this is going to be a decent defense. And Xavier McKinney, he's a – dude, I hate that they got him. He's a stud, man. And uh, Julian Love, he has definitely improved his game. But they added Pinnock and Belton and then Lane and Flott and McLeod in the defense. You know, Flott was a good draft pick for them. Or Darius Williams, unfortunately, banged up. But they've got some decent uh, kids in secondary there. So we'll see how they can pull it all together. But uh, a vastly improved team, I do believe. Um, and they got themselves a new punter. Uh, but, yeah, if Slayton, they were talking about getting traded. They brought in Richie James. Maybe he could help in the return game. But. I thought the Giants did well this offseason, and I thought Thibodeau was a great pick for them. So 
Son of a bitch. Uh, but it is what it is, you know? Uh, Macho Man Savage. Let's go. Jimmy Man Savage. That's hilarious. Macho Jimmy Man Savage. I love every second of it. Ooh, yeah, dude. That's beautiful. Uh, Eagles, NFC champs. You know it, dude. Super Bowl champs. Let's hope, my brother. So, look, this has been an intense offseason for us, and we're going to get into it in one second. Uh, agree with Sanders. We're an all-star team. Not a dream team, but an all-star team. Well, you guys know I've been saying that since last year. The pieces were in place that this team was going to be contending for a Super Bowl this year. Because if you looked at the holes on defense, we had enough salary cap. We had enough draft picks that if you added a nose tackle, Sam linebacker, you guys remember all the stuff we talked about pre-draft, pre-free agency. You got to go after us on Reddit, Kaiser White. You got to draft Jordan Davis, Nicobe Dean. Well, all those things happened. So you see what's <clears throat> the, it was all a dream, but it's all right there in front of us. All those things happened. And all I was trying to do was piece out, you know, how things looked. You know, from my perspective, this offense, you know, if Jalen Hurst keeps developing, you open up the playbook, start passing the ball more, the play action, everything, and you add, we talked about those big-name receivers that were looking for a new contract, A.J. Brown being one of those guys, we got him too. So that's monstrous. And trading for C.J. Gardner-Johnson, the, you know, cherry on top right at the end of free agency here, the offseason, whatever. I love every second of it. And, you know, free agency is always going on. You can sign people. But I think that the Eagles are really in a prime position. And it's beautiful to see other people, you know, joining in. And it's like it, it was the, one of the hardest years last year telling people, look, it's going to be bumpy roads this year. But wait, just wait, because Howie's going to just kill it. He's got enough money. He's got enough picks. And holy shit, did he go above and beyond. So, Let's go Howie and let's go birds. So get excited for this season because big things are coming, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, you know it. You know it. So I'm ready to run through a wall, man. I'm ready to run through a wall at all times because I've, I've just been trying to get people excited. Every show I've been able to go on this offseason, every place I've been able to just spread that knowledge about the defense, explain what's going on with this team. Because there was so much confusion because the media just kept telling people, the Eagles are the next Jets, next Browns, they're going to be horrible. And it was just like, no. Oh, they're changing defense. No, they're actually just improving it. So let's go. Running the same multiple schemes, but just lots of pieces. We were missing personnel last year. So this year, time to dominate. So let's look at what the Eagles did to add and be ready to dominate. So C.J. Gardner, Johnson, as we talked about, the cherry on top. Oh, yes. A very versatile safety. You talk about can play free safety, strong safety. And we're going to be, you know, in those cover twos a lot. But people don't realize, you know, you're talking about quarter, quarter, half. You're talking so many different coverages. It's not very simple. But you do have two high safeties a lot of the time. It doesn't matter what you're calling them. So you could have Epps and Gardner Johnson out there a lot of the time. You could throw in a bl blank and chip, whatever you want to do. But it's beautiful. You could have this kid when you get in the red zone. Maybe he drops down to nickel corner, taking on some of those bigger tight end receivers, running backs that Avante Maddox struggles with. So a lot of things you can do with him. Very excited. But, you know, we had to have an overhaul here. So that is exactly what we did. You see on the offensive side of the ball, Arthago, white side, gone. Rager, gone. Oh, yes. Jordan Howard's still available out there. People begging for him to be brought back. Old man River may just have that happen after week two. We'll see. Jack Anderson, damn you Giants, Brooks retired. So Nate Herbert goes to the Jets. You lose a bunch of linemen. That I didn't like too much, but we've got a lot of depth there. I love the linemen we do have here. Greg Ward is on our IR, but I do believe he'll be released when he is healthy. Then on the defense, quite the overall there too. You lose Avery, Harris was just let go, Kerrigan, Nelson, Ridgeway, and Singleton. But the additions, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah, I still believe Devin Allen will be able to make this roster he just switched to number 18, taking Regger's number. Hilarious. Um, but this dude, you know, he's got a lot of talent, can help as a special teams guy, but I think he needs to be able to help in the return game. So maybe help him, you know, get that game up on the practice squad, and then maybe we see him week four or five. But I think the first couple weeks, Britton Covey can be brought up. You get to see him in the return game. I, I would be okay with that because you're allowed to bring up two practice squad players to talk about that. Now, look at this, dude. A.J. Brown, Zach Pascal, And look, Ian Book and Trey Sermon were great young picks. You know, last year, teams giving up on them, draft picks. Hey, I'm all for it. Josh Shills, a great undrafted kid. So on offense, I already loved where our offense was, but you had a stud at wide receiver and then a red zone monster in Zach Pascal, tied last year with Cooper Cup for red zone targets with nine. I am very excited about the offense. And then the defense. You guys have seen the millions of videos I've made 
trying to explain to the damn media that we're not switching defenses. And this is why we're adding these pieces, damn it. So you get versatile safeties and Gardner Johnson, blanket chip. Joby is a versatile defensive back. You get guys here wide linebacker. Oh, yes. We'll talk about the draft picks in a second. But just look at the undrafted and the free agent picks. Oh, yeah. Hassan Reddick. Oh, my Lord. And James Bradbury. Oh, I can't believe those picks happened. You guys remember when we talked about those months before that? The dream was out there, man. So the only dream people talk about the dream team. No, it was just a dream that happened. And now it's a dream being realized. Let's go. But this draft, oh, yes. We talked about must have Jordan Davis. You must add a nose tackle if you're going to run these damn odd schemes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we got ourselves a nose tackle and he is a monster. So Jordan Davis, come on down. We got the Jason Kelsey replacement we talked about. We got the stud linebacker we talked about, the Sam linebacker, and the F-type tight end that can take over for Zach Ertz. So, yep, -er. Jack Stoll playing that H-back role, and then Goddard, your Y-type tight end. We really added to where we needed. So you look at this depth chart, and you just, mm, yeah, this is the number one rushing attack last year, added A.J. Brown, Zach Pascal. Oh, yes. And then Jurgens and Sills, bright future. But those tight ends, you're going to see, 12 personnel, 13 personnel, <clears throat> excuse me. But you've got guys like Goddard, Stoll, Calcaterra, who play those different roles we just talked about. The Y type in Goddard, the F type in Calcaterra, and the H back in Stoll. And I really think you're going to see some special things from this offense. Those four wide receivers, all very versatile, interchangeable. I think special things lie ahead, ladies and gentlemen, and the best offensive line. I mean, in the game, how can you forget about that? So, yeah, uh, pretty excited about this. And then when you look at the defense, if you guys are looking for the different schemes, the odd, the even, all that stuff, the under, over. We talked about it during a show a couple days ago. Go check that video out. But you can check out why it's listed like this, why you have to have your edge rushers, your Sam linebackers categorized differently. But regardless, we've got 12 defensive linemen, and they're going to feast on people. And uh I really can't wait to see it. I'm going to be real with you. Milton Williams' future is bright. I think all of these guys, very bright future. But you see five starters added, and they were the must-haves. And I can't believe how he went out and did it. So very excited about the future, the depth you have there. So this team, ready to rock and roll, ready to contend, and not just for this year, but for years to come. So we only have one question mark, and that is the return guy. So a lot of options. Uh, even guys like Devontae Smith are out there that can return. So you never know what the Eagles want to do. Again, we talked about Britton Covey being brought in. Maybe he could return, but the Eagles have so many options here. Um, this team, it has me excited because, you know, when you stake your claim on something as far as last year, uh, you got to you gotta stick to it. So I did. I tried to break it down. Howie, he stuck, and you guys saw when I got to meet, not meet him, but see him again a few weeks ago. I got to thank him, you know, like, thanks, dude, uh, for doing what we were all praying you would do. But it's just, it's nice to see. It's like, those were the things with the money, the picks. And, you know, people were telling everybody, you didn't have picks, you didn't have money. It's like, that's incorrect. So you teach them about the cap. You try to teach them about the defense, why we need to add these pieces. You show them. So tried. We did, didn't we? Uh, but look, it, it is what it is. And you have to, you have to just be excited regardless. It, their media is going to be on board now. And then the ones that aren't, they'll be there soon enough. I can assure you because, Dude, they just don't know what they're talking about, and that's where the confusion lies. So it's like, F them, dude. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but uh, the Harris move, you know, it it, uh, it was something that, you know, when you go and make a trade like that, it doesn't surprise you anymore because he wants to start, and that's a move that it's going to allow him not to start. So uh, it, it is what it is. Seth Joyner finally gave Howie his flowers. Yeah, man, he definitely, he's one of those people that really doesn't understand what's going on a lot of the time. And, you know, you get that with old school football players. Like, I played 20 years ago. So, I know it's like, that's cool, dude. Like, do you really understand how the cap works and all that stuff? Like, is that what you did when you played? Like, mm, I bet. I, I bet because I can see how much you understand that stuff. Uh, yeah, there's no more excuses for people to uh, be talking about Gannon. They're finally going to have to learn who Jonathan Gannon is. I hear you. Uh, go Birds. Yeah, go Birds. National media and a few local hated it hurts and used him. It's a question mark, but now it's like, yeah, man. It, you guys know I did my best to get people on board with Hertz when they were talking about Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, Jimmy Garoppolo. It was like, dude, 
Jalen Hurts season, baby. So I did my best. I did my damn best. Uh, so it's nice to see people coming around because you know how tough it is to have everyone against you. Like, no, you don't know what you're talking about. It's like, I'm just trying to give you facts. And that's all I rely on. And people get upset about that. So let them in. Let them hate. I, as I said back then, they'll all flip-flop soon enough, my man. Uh, Washington. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, Washington signed Kerrigan as D-line coach. Yes. Yep. Uh, Jason Peters, I'm not here to talk about that. Uh, their coaching moves, Jason Peters will give the, but uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys saying that Jason Peters will give cowgirls total of 11. Get, yeah. Uh, a lot of flags, uh, a lot of flags, blah, blah, blah. Be ready to get swept again. James hates, uh, himself. I'm sorry to hear that James. I hope your life gets better. My brother, uh, night is here. Uh, yeah, it's getting there, I guess, uh, three 30, but, uh, go birds, you know it. Let's, uh, Let's all just indulge in the fact, though, that the Philadelphia Eagles will win the NFC East. And how we went out and proved we do have cap space. We did have draft picks. And he went out and used them well. And this team is ready to dominate. So if you're looking for the grades on the offseason moves, go check out that video from last night. We talked about that. But wanted to give you a nice little touch up there. I know that video last night was a little late. So I apologize for that. But very excited um, you know, and the Cowboys now having to sign 40-year-old Jason Peters, that's a horrible sign for them. And we talked about the other teams. They've improved. But I really think the Eagles have a dominant roster. And if things gel, there could be bumpy roads to start the season. Don't kid yourselves because, you know, this is a new team. It looks great on paper, but you actually have to do things together. We didn't tackle, you know, so people have to stay healthy. We have to do all those things. So if those things can happen, uh, I believe this team can be very dominant, and I'm very very excited about the future of this team. So uh, let's go, birds. But if you guys have any questions, comments you want to leave down below, please feel free. Uh, look, Anthony Harris, you know, he was going to probably come back. But once you make the C.J. Gardner-Johnson trade, mm, no need for it, my man. And uh, got some young, versatile defensive backs they like. So it is what it is. And he probably was like, look, I'm out of here. I want to go somewhere else. I'm not even coming to practice. So. It is what it is. Uh, good for him. Uh, I hope he gets to start somewhere and does well. So good luck. But the birds are about to go stomp on some faces. Uh, and there are some teams you just saw there that could use some safety help. Maybe the Giants. Uh, I know Washington had Cameron Curl banged up. So maybe one of the NFC East rival takes him off our hands. I don't think the Cowboys really need safety help. But you never know. You never know. So we shall see my man Tyree in the building right before I leave. Nice to see you, my man. Uh, I hope you will take the time to go back, check out all this content, put together a million graphics for this. Uh, but, uh, dude, appreciate you. If you guys did get anything from this video, do me a favor. Hit that like button. You can always hit that subscribe button. Turn that notification bell on, and then you'll be joining us next time when we're live talking birds. Uh, look, the return game is where the question mark is, my man. That's where we talked about it. Um, and tight end two is stole tight end three is Calcaterra. Love that. Talked about that too. Go check the beginning of this video out. Let me know your thoughts after you watch it. But the return game, I talk about Britton Covey being brought up from the practice squad. We talk about, you can bring up two players each week and you can do that three times before the player actually has to go through the waiver wire to get back onto the practice squad. So you really, uh, can do that the first few weeks. Maybe the Michael P Ryan, he's done that, you know, in college and man, whatever, uh, maybe he gets back there. You never know. Um, there's going to be competition in practice, though, so we'll see. I had a list of guys back there, though, so go check that out, my man. But I appreciate all of you taking the time. I hope you're enjoying your Labor Day. Hope you're staying safe. I know it's pouring rain here, so it blows, but uh, about to roll out, try to stay safe. It looks like it kind of chilled out a little bit, but I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Uh, if you need anything, you know whether you want to talk about birds, life, you can always reach out to me. I appreciate you guys always taking the time. So I always try to give back that time. Love all of you. Stay safe. Have a happy Labor Day. If you need me, please feel free. Please reach out. Um, and I know some of you, I've been trying to get back to my messages today. A wild holiday. So uh, I will definitely get back to a lot of you. But I appreciate you taking time. Until next time. And tomorrow. Tomorrow. I, I don't know how I could almost forget this. But tomorrow, I will be back. And we will be going behind enemy lines. And talking about the Detroit Lions. That's right. It's game week. So we're going to talk about our opponent, get to know them, and then we'll go through their injury report throughout the week and everything. It's it's here, ladies and gentlemen. 
the time we talked about. It's time for the world to be put on notice. So I hope they're ready. I hope you're all ready. Have yourselves a great rest of your evening. I will be back tomorrow. Glad to hear you're all doing well. Hope everyone's enjoying their time off. You stay safe out there. And uh, as always, of course, um, come on!